PCG. The full form for this PCG is Basiline Galmet Guarin. This is the full form of this and this is very important question in TNBSC so keep in mind and note it. Okay, note it in a notebook and it is a vaccine for tuberculosis that is TB in short form. Okay, tuberculosis and uh, this injection will be given at the third day of the baby born. Okay, after after third day it will be given to the babies. Okay, then what is carcinoma? Carcinoma is a cancer. Okay, that forms in epithelial cells. What is epithelial tissue? Epithelial tissues are lines most of our organs that is epithelial epithelial in the sense outer Okay, it covers the outer region of the organs As well as the inner layer inner in the sense uh, for example esophagus esophagus in the sense It's a foot pipe. Okay from mouth to the stomach that pipe is called as esophagus and our skin outer skin is also made up of epithelial tissues and most cancers affecting our skin okay most of the cancers are the skin as well as the breast kidney liver lungs pancreas and prostate gland head and neck are carcinomas okay the skin 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 is made up of the epithelial tissues okay so the outer covering of breast the kidney liver lungs pancreas prostate gland head and neck are the carcinomas okay so carcinoma means cancer okay and that forms in epithelial tissue most of the tissue affected by carcinoma is epithelial tissue okay tumor inducing virus are called oncogenic virus the tumor inducing virus which virus which induces the tumor means oncogenic okay next one see what are soluble vitamins actually if you take the vitamin there are major six types of vitamins okay vitamin a d e k and vitamin b and c now in that among this uh, six it is divided into two one is water soluble vitamin and another one is fat soluble what is water soluble vitamins b and c keep this in mind very easy it is the rest are fat soluble vitamins okay so vitamin b and vitamin c so let us take this vitamin b there are nine uh, vitamin b okay vitamin b's are nine nine different types what are they let us see okay folate first one is folate next one is diamine diamond diamond is vitamin b1 okay riboflavin this is vitamin b2 okay and niacin niacin pantothenic acid biotin and vitamin b6 and vitamin b12 okay so there are totally nine vitamin b okay nine vitamin b's what are those folate diamine riboflavin niacin pantothenic acid biotin vitamin b6 and vitamin b12 okay and the next one is vitamin c so these two are vitamin b and vitamin c are water soluble vitamins okay they are soluble only in water if we take these vitamins along with the food in the sense the food in the sense in the food the vitamins will be so those vitamins they are soluble only in water okay so deficiency of any of these water soluble vitamin result in a clinical syndrome that may result in severe morbidity and mortality okay next one is fat soluble fat soluble vitamins are a d e k apart from this b and c the rest are called fat soluble okay they are soluble only in fat now see nourishment of nerve cells provided by nourishment of nerve cells each and every nerve cells are nourished by vitamin b1 so vitamin b1 is very very important that is diamond okay diamond is very very important uh, because if uh, your nerve cells nerve cells in the sense brain as well as brain is made up of so many millions of uh, nerve cells okay and the spinal cord and also the side nerves axillary nerves okay that uh, terminal nerves every nerve is nourished by vitamin b1 so vitamin b1 is very very important for the body body in the sense for your nervous system nervous system vitamin b1 is important okay so where we can find this vitamin b1 let us see okay diamond another name for vitamin b1 is diamond keep in mind 
peas some fresh fruits such as bananas and oranges nuts whole grain breads some fortified breakfast cereals and also in liver okay so every day if you take one banana one banana that makes your vitamin requirement okay enough vitamin b1 requirement in your food if you take bananas as well as the oranges oranges we won't get uh, only seasonal seasonal we get the oranges bananas daily we, every time every season we get bananas so we can take it as well as whole grain whole grains peas okay in those uh, the diamond will be there that is the skin are very very important skins of the cereals are very very important and also you can find this where diamond and liver okay so vitamin b1 which nourishes the nerve cells in our body the another name of vitamin b1 is diamond okay this is the chemical name diamond okay now next one is riboflavin this is also very very important for our body okay it is vitamin b2 vitamin b2 okay so this is a water soluble water soluble vitamin okay where it found in the sense dairy milk yogurt cheese eggs lean beef and pork organ meats okay chicken breast chicken breast in the sense the upper part of the chicken uh, apart from thigh thigh region fish fortified cereal and bread almonds spinach okay so in all these uh, food material the riboflavin is present okay so you can take either one of the one of this food you can take eggs will be available fish you can take almonds few almonds you can take okay spinach now deficiency what are the deficiencies of these riboflavin is cracked lips sore throat swelling of the mouth and throat swollen tongue it is called as glass stitches hair loss skin rash anemia itchy red eyes cataracts in severe cases okay if it is continuous loss of vitamin uh, b2 makes cataracts in your eyes okay so vitamin b2 is very very important okay and it causes anemia also so skin rash hair loss main hair loss so if you take all those food material in the sense Uh, you won't feel uh, the hair loss okay so your hair will be in good condition if you take all these food material not every day every day one you can one you can take it now next one is chlorophylls chlorophylls you all know that it present in the leaves of plants okay it is a greenish pigment which contains porphyrin ring okay this this may come in a tn basic question what it is present in the sense greenish pigment which contain porphyrin ring okay this is very important this is a staple ring shaped molecule around which electrons are free to migrate okay it's a ring shaped molecule around which which one uh, freely migrate in the sense it is electron okay because of the electron because the electrons move freely the ring has the potential to gain or lose electrons easily okay so the, the electron jump here and there so it may lose or gain which one the porphyrin ring okay and thus the potential to provide energized electrons to other molecule so when it jumps it is energized which one the electron okay so chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b if you take the chlorophylls these pigments there are two major pigments one is chlorophyll a and another one is chlorophyll b okay which forms in the uh, higher plants higher plants the former one that is chlorophyll a is a blue green pigment the later one is that is chlorophyll b is yellow green pigment chlorophyll b is yellow green chlorophyll a is blue green blue yellow this one keep in mind chlorophyll a is blue chlorophyll b is yellow okay yellow green pigment blue green pigment okay and they give the characteristic green color due to the strong absorbance of red and blue light the other types of chlorophyll include c1 c2 c3 d e and chlorophyll f so how many types of chlorophylls are there it is c1 c2 c3 d e and chlorophyll f so these these many types are 
there okay one two three four five and six okay so c1 c2 c3 d e and f okay now chlorophyll the major groups of photosynthetic pigments are first one chlorophyll second one carotenoids carotenoids this is also one type of pigment photosynthetic pigment okay chlorophyll is green in color carotenoid which is photosynthetic plants as well as in bacteria carotenoids present in uh, plants as well as bacteria okay phycobilins phycobilins it's a light capturing bile pigment found in the chloroplast of red algae and cyanobacteria this is very important where this phycobilins present in the sense red algae and cyanobacteria red algae phyco means cyano phyco means cyanobacteria and red algae keep in mind okay flavonoids common in plants including gymnosperm angiosperm bryophytes and ferns okay xanthinin xanthinin okay xanthophyll it is otherwise called as xanthophyll or zea xanthine zea xanthen xanthophyll okay it is yellow of corn seeds see corn seeds we are seeing the color of the corn seeds are yellow right that is because of the presence of the pigment which is called as xanthophyll zea xanthen okay zea xanthen or xanthophyll where it present in the sense it is yellow in color so in the corn seeds we can find the corn seeds are yellow that's because of the presence of the xanthophyll next one beta carotin beta carotin where we find in the sense it is orange peel okay carotin in the sense it is orange in color carrot right why carrot is orange in color in the sense carotin is present in that carrot okay so it is orange in color right all those things are the uh, types of uh, photosynthetic pigments chlorophyll carotenoids psychobilins and flavonoids xanthin and beta carotin okay see jumping gene what is jumping gene jumping gene see a transposable element or jumping gene is a segment of dna sequence okay that can change its position why it is called as jumping gene in the sense it can change its position okay this point is very important change its position so it is called as jumping gene okay within the genome this is very important within the genome okay sometimes it may create uh, sometimes it may creating or reverse the mutation and altering the cells genome signs okay who proposed this theory in the sense it is barbara mcclintock okay proposed the theory of jumping genes where the sense in the plant maize okay so who proposed this theory who proposed the theory barbara mcclintock proposed this theory okay now next one see fossil wood park fossil wood park is in vilupura okay fossil wood park is in vilipuram in tamil nadu now ethnobotany what is ethnobotany ethnobotany is the study of how people of a particular culture and region make use of indigenous plants that is native indigenous in the sense native plant how the people are a uh, particular culture or a particular region make use of the native plants okay plants provide food medicine shelter dyes fiber oil resins gums soap soaps waxes latex tannins and even contribute to their air we breathe okay so the people use the local plants that is native plants okay the term ethnobotany was coined in this is very important this ethnobotany ethno means native okay indigenous plants make use of who will make use of it the particular culture the people of a particular culture or a particular region people make use of their own native plants that is called as ethnobotany okay this term was coined by ethnobotany was coined in 1895 by j m hasberger okay keep in mind this name is very important this will be asked in tnbc it is already asked also one of the paper it was asked so keep this in mind ethnobotany was coined in which year 1895
by J. M. Hasberger. He is an American botanist at the University of Pennsylvania. Modern ethnobotany is an uh, interdisciplinary field drawing together scholars from anthropology, botany, archaeology, geography, medicine, linguistics, economics, landscape, architecture, and pharmacology. Okay. So, the you have to keep in mind is ethnobotany. What is ethnobotany? The people of, it is a study. Ethnobotany is a study of how people of a particular culture and region make use of indigenous plants. Okay. So, what is ethnobotany? It is the study of, okay. It is, it's a study of how people of a particular culture and region make use of indigenous native plants. Okay. So, what these plants are providing in the sense, these plants provide food, medicine, shelter, dyes, fibers, oil, resins, gums, soaps, waxes, latex, tannins and others. Okay. Now, this word is coined by J. M. Hasberger in the year 1895. J. M. Haasberger in the year 1895. Okay, he is an American botanist. Next one, see the theory of use and disuse. The theory of use and disuse. This theory was proposed by Lamarck. Okay, Lamarck. Who proposed this theory? Lamarck proposed this theory. So, what is this theory? He suggested that changes in traits or characters occurs in organism depending on whether an organ is used or disused continuously. Continuous use of an organ, according to Lamarck, would also result in the inheritance of that organ by next generation. Okay, this point is very important. What Lamarck mentioned is, if it is continuously used, that organ will be inherited to the next generation. Okay, while constant disuse, if the organ is used in the sense, it will be it will be inherited to the next generation whereas if it is disuse in the sense it won't be it won't be inherited to the next generation that is his theory okay so while constant while constant disuse of an organ would gradually result in degeneration of the organ over time slowly it will degenerate slowly it will degenerate okay so so if you use it will inherit if you disuse, slowly it degenerate. That is that is the theory of Lamarck. What is the theory called? Use and disuse theory. Okay. Now see next one. The recapitulation theory. What is recapitulation theory? This theory was formulated by E. H. Haeckel. E. H. Haeckel. Okay. Recapitulation theory. What this uh, theory states in the sense ontogeny which is the developmental history of an organism from the zygote stage until it is ready for hatching or gestation repeats phylogeny which is the history of evolution of the ancestors this theory formulated by Heckel. recapitulation theory in the sense see this is fish okay embryo and slowly it forms a fish this is salamander growth of salamander from the embryo to salamander this is tortoise okay this is chick and this is hog calf rabbit and human and you see this one most probably almost the same okay almost the same but there is a slight difference so a slight difference in the embryo so this is called as recapitulation theory okay states ontogeny the developmental history of an organism from zygote zygote okay from zygote until it is ready for hatching or gestation okay repeats phylogeny phylogeny means what from the first to the till the present that is called as phylogeny the transformation of the early age to present now, which is the history of the evolution of the ancestors? This theory is formulated by Heckel, okay, E. H. Heckel, that is recapitulation theory. See, almost the embryo stage, almost, whether it is fish or the human, the, sh the shape is same almost. So, it is called as recapitulation 
okay from the early age till the present age let us see now the spirulina spirulina is otherwise called as this uh, usually it is called as scp okay what is this scp is nothing but single cell proteins okay spirulina is called as single cell protein this spirulina is rich in proteins okay rich in proteins how much percentage in the sense 62 to 72 percentage are there okay how many 60 60 to 72 70 percentage of protein are there in the spirulina so it is taken as the supplementary diet supplementary diet for protein okay protein deficiency not only in protein it is also rich in vitamins minerals crude fiber and other nutrients okay and uh, now it is it is the staple food for sportsmen and also it is found in babies food okay so scp means single cell protein that is spirulina the protein content uh, percentage is 60 to 72 okay and also it is rich in vitamins minerals crude fiber and other nutrients okay and it is usually uh, given uh, to the mal nourished children okay uh, they recover very quickly after uh, taking this spirulina okay so this is a very good very good important dietary supplement for protein which one spirulina which is a single cell proteins okay next one let us see protist protist are simple eukaryotic organisms that are neither plants nor animal or fungi they comes in between these okay they are not uh, the plants nor the animals or the fungi protist are unicellular in nature but can also found as colonies of cells what you are seeing here are the protozoa okay protozoa in the sense this is called as euglena euglena you can see a group of euglena here okay so protists are they are not plants they are not animals or they are not fungi okay it's a special special uh, group of organism okay eukaryotic eukaryotic in the sense a specific nucleus will be inside okay next one bryophytes bryophytes are plants okay or plants but they are a very um, what we call uh, very minute plants very minute plants as well as they are uh, named as mosses okay mosses or liver worts or horn worts okay non vascular plants there won't be any proper systems in these plants but they green in color and they produce their own food material okay they have no roots or vascular tissues but instead absorb they absorb the water and nutrients from the air through their surface okay through their uh, the surface they absorb the water as well as the nutrients from the air okay so bryophytes bryophytes okay bryophytes now next one the largest uh, acetabular area okay acetabular area what is acetabular these plants are called as acetabular area so the largest cell found in plant kingdom is acetabular area okay largest cell largest cell you have to keep in mind the largest cell found in a plant kingdom is acetabular area okay this is very very important acetabular area this also this question also ask and this is also having another one name this acetabular area are also called as mermaids wine glass mermaid in the sense in the water we can see the mermaid no? the wine glass of mermaid okay so this structure makes structure makes like a wine glass so it is called as wine glass of mermaid okay what is that acetabular area you have to keep this in mind acetabular area is a genus of green algae in the family polyphyzae polyphyzae okay which one acetabular area okay so it's a genus is a genus of green algae in the family in the family polyphyzae it is typically found in tropical water acetabular area is a single cell organism okay single cell organism but gigantic in size this is a single cell but it is gigantic in size and complex in form 
making it as an excellent model organism for studying cell biology. This, this is which makes the cell biology very easy uh, because we can study very easily what are present inside the cells. Okay, so it helps a lot to study. So what uh, we have seen here, Acetabularia area is a genus of green algae. This is green algae, and uh, only in this we find a largest cell. Okay, largest cell. That uh, kingdom is called as Acetabularia. It is having another one name. It is called as Mermaid's wine glass because of the appearance. Okay, and which helps to study the organism, organism or rather study the cell very clearly because the cell is very large in size. See what you are seeing here is vascular cryptogram. This is vascular cryptogram which refers to those plants which do not make the seeds. Okay. And uh, these are uh, referred as pteridophytes. Okay. Pteridophytes. These plants are pteridophytes. Those pteridophytes are referred as vascular cryptograms. Okay. What are referred as uh, vascular cryptograms? This is a question asked in TNBAC. Okay. Group 1. What is that? What are vascular cryptograms? Pteridophytes are, the, are referred as vascular cryptograms. Okay. Why it is called as vascular cryptogram in the sense the veins will be there, but there won't be any proper stem or okay. And also they won't produce any seeds. Okay. At the back side of the seeds, you can find the spores. Those spores fell down and uh, make a new plant. Okay. Now next one, see rhizodermis or epilemma. The question is, what is piliferous layer? Okay, question is, what is piliferous layer? What is piliferous layer where it present? So you can see in this, this is a cross section of the root. Cross section of the root. You can find the root has, isn't it? This zone, this zone is called as piliferous layer. Okay, where, where in this, in this area only we can find the root hair. Okay, in this regionally we can find the root hair so this is called as the outer layer is called as piliferous layer okay and this is cortex cortex of the root this is root hair you know and this is a passage cell through which the water from the root hair comes to the cortex and then enter into the passage okay passage and this is endodermis this is phloem Okay, phloem and this is pericycle. What we see inside is pericycle and these are xylem vessels. Okay, this is a big xylem vessel and these all these are xylem vessel. Okay, and uh, conjective. These are the conjective tissue, tissues and uh, Casparian strip. This is okay. So this is the structure of the root. So the water is observed by this root hand then to this peliferous layer and then it enters into the cortex then through this passage cell it enter into into the xylem okay in the xylem only the water will water from the root it goes up okay this is the this is the cross section of root so peliferous layer in the sense this is the outer section is called as outer layer is called as peliferous layer. Okay, P lemma, rhizodermis. So these are the names given to this. Okay, rhizodermis, a P lemma are peliferous layer. Okay, these are very very important. Rhizodermis or a P lemma are peliferous layer. Okay. Peliferous layer or the root hair zone is also known as rhizodermis or epilemma. Okay. Now next one. Next one is agaricus. What is agaricus? Agaricus is a mushroom. Okay. What we uh, call is button uh, mushroom. Na? That is agaricus. Okay. It, it may be edible. Some, uh, some are edible and some are poisonous. So we have to be very careful while taking and uh, eating. Okay. Some are, some are edible, some are poisonous. Okay. So this include, uh, this genus includes the common button mushroom, agaricus, 
bisporus the name is agaricus bisporus okay the fee and the field of mushroom okay what we can uh, call this botanical name is agaricus by sporus sporus okay agaricus by sporus which one the button mushroom button mushroom okay now next one chlorella chlorella contains violaxanthin violaxanthin what is violaxanthin in the sense it is antioxidant okay find in the greens leaf greens which one chlorella 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 this is algae okay so it is a single celled fresh water algae native to taiwan and japan these are that algae which algae chlorella okay it is a single cell single cell and native is japan and taiwan okay it is rich in proteins vitamins and minerals we can it is edible edible actually chlorella is edible and the chlorella is a green unicellular algae it is commercially produced and distributed worldwide as a dietary supplement like spirulina we have seen spirulina no so spirulina how it is supplementary diet like that this chlorella is also a supplementary diet but it is a single cell spirulina is also single cell 70 60 to 72 percentage of protein were there right so that is also highly rich in protein and vitamin and other minerals okay so this chlorella is also another one and where it is it is from japan taiwan taiwan are the natives of this chlorella okay next one see nitham nitham is a genus of gymnosperms okay the sole genus is in the family gentesia within uh, the tenophyta okay tenophyta they are tropical evergreen trees shrubs and lianas unlike other gymnosperms they possess vessels elements in the xylem okay so in the xylem the vessels will be vessel elements will be there okay so trees you know they are in the form of in the form of three maybe trees or shrubs or lianas okay what is uh, liana liana is a long stemmed woody vine that is rooted in the soil at ground level and uses trees as well as other means of vertical support to climb up okay this is lianas lianas in the sense uh, they need some support to climb up okay they live on trees when it uh, yeah, when it is rooted on the land when when it is placed on the land it uh, it roots deeply and uh, with the support of other trees it climbs up okay so uh, nitam nitam means it is a genus of gymnosperm gymnosperm okay next one so let us see uh, biosynthetic phase okay what is dark or black man's reaction don't confuse it is a part of photosynthesis okay so uh, it is this reaction is found by the black man so it is called as black man's reaction or dark reaction okay both are same so when it takes place in the sense uh, for during photosynthesis it takes place but this reaction doesn't require light okay so that is the main thing of this one the morning only it takes place but uh, it doesn't require any light okay catalyst assimilation of co2 to carbohydrate in this picture is the frog okay new variety it is found from 2017 in south india okay and it has a shiny purple skin a light blue ring around its eyes okay and a pointy piggy nose okay uh, the nose is like a pig right and uh, it is named as bupati's purple frog common name is bupati's purple frog and its zoological name is nasica patracus okay nasica patracus bupati okay why this bupati is added in the sense to honor dr subramaniam bupati he is a herpetologist who lost his life in the western ghats in 2014 okay so keep this in mind this is very important point in tnbsc and next one is aringer anna zoological park also known as the vandalur zoo in the southwestern part of chennai it is in tamil nadu spreads over an area of 15 100 okay 1500 acres is one of the largest zoological park in india largest zoological park this you have to keep in mind 
this is very important question in TNBC. The zoo houses, okay, the zoo is houses. How many species are there of flora and fauna? Okay, this number is very important. It is 2,553 species, both flora, flora and fauna. In the sense, plants and animals, okay, plants and animals. Next one, see, this is also very, very important point. What is that in the sense? A reflective layer of tissue called tatum lucidum. Tatum lucidum. Okay. So reflective layer it is. See, you can see this in the this reflective layer. This is the eye. Okay. So the reflective layers. So in which animal it present in the sense the animals, the nocturnal animals. Okay. See, uh, for example, tiger as well as the cat, you can find their eyes glow during the night time. Okay, so that is because of the layer which is present in the eye. That layer is called as a reflective layer. It is called as tatum lucidum. Tatum lucidum. See, let us see in this uh, important connective tissue disorders. Okay, it is heritable type. Okay, uh, from generation to generation it passes. Among that, first syndrome is Eggless Danlos syndrome. Eggless Danlos syndrome. Okay, uh, what it does in the sense the synthesis of collagen will be affected. Synthesis of collagen will be affected. Collagen is very very important. What is collagen in the sense? You see, for example, this is your muscle. This muscle is connected with the bone by means of collagen. Okay, sometimes it is called as tendon in the larger bones. Uh, the next, uh, the collagen is a connective tissue. Okay, collagen is a connective tissue this synthesis of this tissue will be affected in the sense the connection between the muscle and the bone are affected okay so you have to take uh, the food very carefully what are the foods which is required to keep in our collagen in a proper uh, way that you have to find it you can go for the you can search in google and you can find what are the foods which is required for if you are affected slightly from the beginning itself you can cure it okay so uh, prevention is better than cure so take care of your body your body is very very important okay if body is affected yeah, we will lose our life right so take care about your body next one is sticker syndrome sticker syndrome what is stickler syndrome in the sense this is also the same affects collagen as a result facial abnormalities this is uh, the whole body the whole body that is the joints heart walls, organ walls and arterial walls whereas this stickler syndrome is it affects the facial abnormalities okay so whatever it may be you have to take your food in a proper way okay so take proper way and do exercise that is very important do proper exercise every day be active be active okay exercise is very very important next one see rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma in the sense it is cancer okay you have to uh, from the name itself you have to identify what it is that okay syndrome in the sense it is a syndrome but sarcoma in the sense a syndrome is deficiency of some uh, food material or uh, some other uh, changes in the gene okay but sarcoma is a cancer life-threatening soft tissue tumor of head neck and urinogenital tract okay you know genital tract soft tissues top soft tissues wherever the soft tissues are there that uh, soft tissues will be affected okay affected that is called as rhabdomyo rhabdomyo sarcoma okay next one autoimmune connective tissue autoimmune connective tissue disorder in that first one is rheumatoid arthritis the immune cells attack and inflame the membranes around the joints okay what is arthritis inflame inflame the membrane around the joints it can also affect the heart lungs as well as the eyes okay so you have to be very careful this is uh, this is what called okay you can uh, see this is a severe condition of uh, Okay, later stage in rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. So, all the joints will be like this. Severe pain you feel. So, be careful about this one. So, take care about your immune, immune system. Okay, whatever it is required for the immune system, you have to take care. All the herbs, herbs. 
okay if you take uh, continuous herbs like tulasi and other uh, karpuravalli like that some holy basil some leaves are there so continuously you take uh, all those things okay uh, bring raj all those things will help uh, a lot help a lot to save your life okay and save your body okay so bring raj and all it is very uh, good for eyes okay it keeps your eyesight okay as well as the lungs lungs okay bring raj bring raj you might have heard this name bring raj bring raj okay if you take a daily four or five leaves morning morning it keeps your eyes very fresh very healthy and also it keeps your lungs very healthy okay next one see it is jograns syndrome jograns syndrome progressive inability to secrete saliva and tears okay so saliva secretion and tear secretions will be less if you, if you are affected by the jograns syndrome okay so this one this one is uh, face your eyes become red okay and the patches you can find here okay patches and your uh, cracked tongue okay all those are symptoms of this one this syndrome next one see palmaris muscle palmaris muscle where is this muscle present let us see see it's a long narrow muscle run from the elbow to the wrist okay elbow to the wrist and is important for hanging and climbing in primates okay primates primates in the sense monkeys and all they climb on the tree right so this helps a lot to climb okay but it is missing in 11% of the humans today so uh, humans today uh, it is 11% is uh, missing okay in humans actually this is uh, this is what the long muscle which is present uh, from from the elbow to the wrist this is called as palmaris longus palmaris longus okay now, let us see what is biopsy biopsy is an examination of tissue or liquid removed from the living body to discover the presence cause or extent of a disease okay so it's an examination of the tissue or liquid which is removed from the living body next one autopsy okay what is autopsy autopsy is a post mortem dissection of a dead body examination to discover the cause of death or extent of disease okay the field of forensic science extensively used this histological technique to trace out crimes okay that is autopsy autopsy is in dead body biopsy is the examination of tissue or liquid removed from the living body okay next one see disease of nervous system see in our body nervous system is very very important the nervous system lasts in the sense the whole health lasts okay because this is the communication main communication part of our body is taken up by the nervous system so let us take care of the nervous system by taking a proper vitamins and adequate protein okay and adequate lipid carbohydrate protein lipid these three foods are very important along with the vitamins and minerals okay so take care about the nervous system this system is very very important okay so first disease is called as parkinson disease okay parkinson disease what is parkinson disease in the sense degenerative disorder of the nervous system that affects movement okay so to keep to keep uh, in proper health what vitamins are very very important in the sense three vitamin that is b complex b complex vitamins are very very important so uh, take care take care in your uh, food okay take care in your food whether you are taking an adequate amount of adequate amount not more okay adequate amount of b uh, vitamins okay b vitamins that are very very important that nourish the nervous system okay nervous system is nourished by those vitamins okay and uh, too much of toxic substances also produced by this nervous system will be removed by the vitamin b only okay so take care take care and uh, see in uh, chemistry class i have given uh, about the complete uh, complete detailed explanation about the b complex how it is taking care about the uh, nervous system so you can uh, go and uh, see that uh, okay chemistry first part first part chemistry of our royal academy okay now see this is parkinson disease symptom see is tube the posture 
back rigidity okay you can't bend you can't bend and flexed elbow and wrist okay it, uh, it just flexible very flexible it's not uh, uh, stiff okay or strong and uh, trimmers in the legs okay trimmers in the legs and uh, stuffing short uh, stepped gait the persons can't uh, walk fast okay slightly flexed hip and knee okay knees knees won't be uh, in a proper condition and the hands trimmer okay and reduced arm swing they they are unable to move their arms okay and a forward tilt of trunk must face okay the face won't be in a proper uh, structure right so all these are the symptoms of the parkinson's disease so take care about your food material and your health the most important uh, thing is your health okay your health and take proper intake of food as well as uh, see that whether you are taking the adequate amount of vitamins and minerals okay and uh, b vitamins are present in the uh, what the fabaceae family that is peas beans and all so every day take a little amount of peas and beans okay beans varieties of vegetables right now alzheimer's disease what is alzheimer's disease and uh, it is a chronic neurogenerative disease okay chronic neurogenerative disease which includes the symptoms of difficulty in remembering reason events problems with the language and uh, disorientation and mood swings okay so alzheimer disease is uh, mainly you can see it is a brain disorder slowly destroys the memory thinking skill eventually Uh, the ability to carry out the simplest task see when the age uh, comes when the age comes the people they they won't do exercise as well as they won't take a proper intake of food material okay what it does in the sense you can see in this picture this is the healthy person's brain okay healthy person's brain this is the neuron which is present inside the brain okay and uh, these are the lobes which is present on the brain you can find this is the alzheimer's brain it is completely it is see all the nerve cells are affected all the nerve cells are affected see when the age grows you will be very healthy if you take care about your nervous system okay so if you are not taking about your uh, nervous system if you are not taking proper vitamins and minerals and food in the sense your brain your brain requires most uh, that is more amount of food is required by the brain okay very very nutritious food is goes to the brain then only the brain is very very healthy and uh, it keeps its all the memory everything memory power everything will be great when in the sense if you take a proper food proper food and oxygen should goes to the goes to the brain then only it will be very healthy so take care about your brain and till the last day of the death you will be very very healthy if you take care about your nervous system as well as immune system okay so if you take care of these two system all the other systems will be perfectly all right okay next one see bicarbonates in the saliva bicarbonates in the saliva make the ph 5.4 to 7.4 if the bicarbonates level in saliva is reduced the saliva becomes acidic and the tooth enamel may get dissolved okay so you have to be very careful if you want to keep your teeth uh, teeth very healthy in the sense what you have to do you have to take care about the bicarbonates in the saliva okay the ph is 5.42 to 7.4 okay if the bicarbonate level in the saliva reduced in the sense the saliva becomes acidic then all the tooth enamel tooth enamel may get dissolved your uh, teeth go what you lost your teeth okay so take care about this one ph of saliva okay next one see n i lunan n i lunan discovered vitamins but the name vitamin was given by dr funk 1912 dr funk 1912 okay who discovered actually who discovered in the sense n i lunan n i lunan but the name was given vitamin that name was given by dr funk 1912 the first vitamin isolated was b1 b1 by dr funk okay the vitamin uh, produced by fermentation process fermentation process using acetobacter okay it is a bacteria that vitamin is vitamin c okay vitamin c okay next one c 
whether cockroaches uh, live or survive, survive without a head whether it is possible yes it is possible okay if we cut the head of cockroach the cockroach can live about a week okay it lives about a week without its head why in the sense their breathing system is outside the body okay breathing they breathe through little holes on each side of their body so uh, it is not breathing through the lungs so head is not necessary for the breathing but the cockroach after a week it dies because of the due to starvation okay is unable to eat you know so if the head is not there they unable to eat so the cockroach dies after a week okay after a week so one week it can survive it can survive why because of the presence of the little holes okay what is that respiratory organ it is called as spiracles okay next one see the nobel prize for the year 2005 was awarded to robin warren and barley marshall for the discovery of helicobacter pylori which causes peptic ulcer okay this is that bacteria helicobacter pylori which causes the peptic ulcer that is stomach ulcer okay stomach ulcer peptic means stomach stomach ulcer okay which one so who got the nobel prize it is robert warren robert warren and barry marshall barry marshall they got the nobel prize in the year 2005 okay for the discovery of this this bacteria this bacteria which cause the pap what is that peptic ulcer okay next one see alimentary canal faces a conflict between the need of nutrient absorption and to keep our intestinal tract free from pathogenic bacteria and virus okay uh, so intestinal okay digestive juices are very very important to kill the bacteria as well as the virus okay when we eat the food the bacteria and virus also enter along with the food material so that that will be killed by the digestive juice okay what is that uh, digestive juice in the sense hydrochloric acid which uh, secretes inside the stomach will kill the kill all the bacteria as well as uh, viruses viruses and other di digestive juice also take part in that so per day per day how many liters of digestive juice are secreted in the sense it is 7 liters this is very important keep note of it seven liters of digestive juice are secreted in alimentary canal and once again it is reabsorbed reabsorbed by the alimentary canal okay otherwise what will happen in the sense the body gets rapidly dehydrated and may lead to reduction in the blood pressure okay so how many liters of digestive juice is secreted in our uh, alimentary canal in the sense it is seven liters how many liters seven liters and what is that in the sense with cl hydrochloric acid is secreted inside the inside the alimentary canal which kills the pan, uh, pathogenic bacteria as well as the virus okay and what is this helicobacter pylori which is the main cause of this peptic ulcer okay it is founded by whom robert warren and barry marshall and they got the nobel prize in the year 2005 next one see surfactants what do you mean by surfactants surfactants are thin non cellular films made of protein and phospholipids covering the alveolar membrane what's alveolar membrane you all know i think it is inside the lungs lungs are made up of so many small air sacs okay small air sacs okay these air sacs only fill the oxygen as well as it takes the carbon dioxide from the cell and gives to the lungs okay so these are called as alveoli small air sacs okay so covering alveolar membrane what is that this this thin film of protein and phospholipids covering the alveolar membrane okay this is alveolar membrane this is this is made up of protein and phospholipids protein and phospholipids okay now the surfactant lowers the surface tension in the alveoli and prevent the lungs from collapsing okay this is very very important so this is reducing the or lowers the surface tension and uh, and prevents the lungs from collapsing collapsing if it is not there the lungs collapse okay so who is preventing that surfactants surfactants okay it also prevent the pulmonary edema pulmonary edema 
okay and uh, premature babies have low levels of surfactants in the alveoli may develop the newborn respiratory distress syndrome what is that syndrome called respiratory distress syndrome okay n r n r that is uh, this n r starts from newborn newborn respiratory distress syndrome okay because of the synthesis of surfactants begins only after 15th week of gestation okay when it starts the synthesis of surfactants starts when in the sense 25th 25th week of gestation okay you can see the lungs it is filled with the mucus actually so surfactants are very very important very very important to keep the lungs in a safe condition okay next to see first heart transplantation was performed in the year 1959 Human heart transplant was performed by Professor Christian Bernard in South Africa in the year 1967. Okay, he is he is uh, the Professor Christian Bernard in South Africa in the year 1967, December 3rd at Crude uh, Square Hospital, Cape Town. Okay, Skur Skur Hospital, Crude Crude Square Hospital, Cape Town. Okay, who done who done the heart transplantation? Professor Christian Bernard in South Africa in the year 1959. Next one, see Doctor Ananji Pali. Ananji Pali Venu Gopal was the first to perform heart transplant A I A M S India on August 3rd, 1994. Okay, he is an African, South African. Okay, in the year 1959, he is an Indian. August 1994. in india first transplant heart transplant by dr ananji palli ananji palli venu gopal okay next one see the average bladder holds between 300 ml to 600 ml of the urine if the urine system is healthy the urine system is healthy urine may stay in the bladder for about Five hours. Okay, this one keep in mind. This is very important. How many hours the urine will be inside the bladder? In the sense, it is five hours. If the person is healthy, okay, and how many ml it hold? In the sense, it is nearly 300 ml to 600 ml. This is according to the intake of water. Okay, intake of water and other liquid food material, right? So it keeps in the urine for about five hours. Okay, so this is in healthy human. Now see. no sense send signal to the brain uh, when the bladder uh, is full where it is needs to emptied okay who send the message in the sense it is nerves from the urinary bladder if it is full it send the message to the brain from the brain it comes to the uh, urinary bladder to release it okay now the muscle in the bladder was called trisar okay trisar muscle trisar okay trisar trisar muscle this is the muscle which is present in the in the urinary bladder and it is very very strong muscle okay very very strong muscle and the elasticity is more okay it's bag like structure the urinary bladder and it uh, it holds so many 300 ml uh, 300 ml to 600 ml it holds so it is this is very very elastic elastic in nature okay and very strong deuterosaur okay deuterosaur muscle where it present in the urinary bladder okay and uh, this uh, may be sometimes weaken uh, because of the stress or something else okay so how to keep that healthy in the sense pelvic floor exercise helps to strengthen these muscles so pelvic floor exercise is very very important you can search in the google how to do that exercise and uh, do it uh, regularly and daily to keep your urinary bladder healthy okay so that uh, if you keep your urinary bladder healthy in the sense uh, that prevents from leakage of urine okay next one see it is the 17th one the world's first successful human kidney transplantation was performed from one twins to another by joseph e murray and his colleagues at peter pent brigham hospital boston in 1954 Okay, 1954. This was done from one twin to another. Okay, which one? Kidney transplantation. The first ever uh, human kidney transplant performed in India 
when it uh, happened in india it is 1965 using okay which hospital king edward memorial hospital at mumbai in may 1965 using a cadaver donor in a non renal failure patient okay failure patient who had a hypernephroma nephroma in the sense hypernephroma in the sense it's a kidney cancer okay and the first successful live donor kidney transplant in india was done at christian medical college hospital bellur in january okay in january the first successful okay first successful this is this is not successful okay this is successful one bellur